You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. After The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Sword Art Online After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's TV Sword Art Online, Online After Show. Hi there, AfterBuzz fans. We oh, oh, oh no. that's right. We changed. Nice. We've got this one. We've gotten to uh, we've gotten to the halfway point of the series for Sword Art Online. I'm your host Megan Salinas, and joining me on the panel today is Katie Cullen. Hi, all my buddies. Liz Rishmawi. Hey, dramatic pause, Liz Rishmawi. <laughs> <laughs> and Tari Miller. Atarashi <laughs> Sekaida. What did you say? New World! Uh, <laughs> I want to stay in the old one. I like Dorian Craig. I really I did miss too. Heathcliff. Uh, and joining us on the panel today, we have a very special ke- uh, guest today, if I could talk correctly, <laughs> is Kevin M. Connolly, aka the voice of Heathcliff. Hi, everybody. How you doing? How are you hey. doing today? I am great. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. We are so so excited to have you, especially when talking about episode 14, The End of the World. I, I'm really happy that we have you here for this episode because this is some of the best that we've seen the series be so yeah. far. Fantastic. Yeah, Fantastic. And, and the reveal that we get in episode 14, it's just astounding. How many people saw it coming? Just just to ask. I I had I had feelings when it, from when they had the first fight, but then as I was watching this episode again for like the second or third time, I just heard Katie's voice in my head. So, <laughs> 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 I just heard her like somewhere in the middle. <laughs> so, yeah, she's been honest. She's like, I don't trust that Heathcliff guy. <laughs> I know where you live. (laughs) (laughs) I was there when you were watching that. No. (laughs) I'm carrying over the creepy from the previous panel. (laughs) No, I didn't trust him, but I didn't realize he was going to be Kayaba Akihiko. I just thought he was some jerk. Right. (laughs) Somebody (laughs) is some jerk. (laughs) Well, I think a lot of the suspicion was kind of centered around Laughing Coffin. Yeah. Because we had seen Laughing Coffin had kind of infiltrated the Knights of the Blood Oath anyway. Right. I thought for sure he was double dipping in guilds. I didn't realize he was in charge of the whole ugly shebang. He's the final boss. <laughs> Jerk. It's like the whole M. Night Shyamalan twist at the end. <laughs> Shyamalan <laughs> ding dong. Yeah, twist. that's it. With a twist. <laughs> you know? But this story works even if you already know the twist. It and does. that's the difference between Sword Art Online and a Shyamalan movie. <laughs> right. Exactly. One of the differences. <laughs> and I, I'll be honest, I got spoiled for it very early on. So like this entire time we've been sitting on the Knights of the Blood Oath, I'm sitting here going, Mm-hmm. I yeah. can't and I'm theorizing <laughs> forever, <laughs> and she's just smiling. Yeah. Bring How about you, Tari? When you, I know you've seen through the series already, but when you were watching through, did you um, have any inkling of suspicion? I, um, I thought it was actually something different. Like when I first was watching it, I had assumed that he was an action, like a in-game, like a very high-level NPC. Um, that's why his like super special uh, system assisted things happen, and why he was able to be a like immortal object. Yeah, I kind of uh, when I was first watching it through, especially since we already went through the whole thing with um Yui Yui. Yui. Yeah. Um, I thought maybe it was like the game itself had created its own like. It created a mind of its own, very like Skynet kind of thing, and like it just it like became cre- self-aware. Yeah, it somehow. became right. self-aware because it kind of is. It's Dot programmed hack. to. It's programmed to do that stuff itself, and I thought it manifested into like this character that was like maybe controlling it on behalf of Akihiba. Or did I say his name? Kayaba right? Akihiko. Kaya- yeah. Akihiko. Yes, <laughs> that guy. It's <laughs> like Shyamalan Master Control from Tron. Yes. yes! yes! End of love. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> And that, yes, no. a whole bunch of 90s kids have seen Tron. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> believe it. That would have made for a very interesting villain. I, I think that would have His been great. His face just gets yeah. stretched out. I'm telling out. you, it's, mm-hmm. it's Dot Hack. 
this is what happens in Dot Hack. The game gets a little self aware and goes, We're gonna keep this person and we're gonna create this and mm-hmm. this is what goes down. Well, that's what we thought was gonna happen, but then yeah. it wasn't. Right. And Which wh- is why I've been calling it Nobody Learned from Dot Hack, the series, the sequel. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much what happens, yes. So, yeah. No um learns. before before we get in, we really wanna talk to Kevin about your role on Sword Art Online and just okay. about your experience in the voice acting world in general. But let's go ahead and talk about this episode because this episode is it's you know, it's the culmination of everything that we've been building to in the Einkrat arc. So let's go ahead and get through that so we can talk to you about sure. playing Heath, Heathcliff. <laughs> if I, gosh, why can't I talk today? No, 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 no. Anyway, that's okay. She I can sells never talk. seashells by the seashore. Okay, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> totally fixed. <And> scene. And <laughs> okay, so we, we pick up the episode exactly where we left off, and the episode is entitled The End of the World. So if you didn't know this was kind of going to be the end of this particular arc, you know, the title sort of gives it away. Right. So when the series is coming out, it's like, wait, this is only episode 14. Yeah, we're That's only the halfway, halfway point. Through. Why How can it, it be the end, end of the, the world? Um... <laughs> So we pick up right in the middle of the the fight with the Skull Reaper, and it's just as menacing as it was when we left off. I was kind of disappointed, though, because uh, they were able to defeat it relatively quickly, probably even within the first 30 seconds of this episode. Right. And it's like, oh, remember that big thing that was killing everybody? Oh, it, it's it's done now. Yeah. It's gone now. We well, beat it. Yay! I think there were cheat codes, right? That's what they <laughs> Someone left, was left, cheating. Left, right, right, up, up, down, down, A, B, A, B. Up, done. <laughs> was that Sonic? So no, I think that was oh, the, Konami the Konami one. code. Oh, I'm yeah. thinking A, B, right, A, C, A, down, A, B, right, A. And then it was like, yes, cheat screen, pick any level I want. <laughs> <laughs> Show my age. Anyway. Uh, no, that's pretty, pretty awesome that you can rattle that off. It's not the Konami code. I, I think I would have been disappointed that the the skull centipede thing like died out really quick if it wasn't for the next battle that that's we were about true. to have. Because right. even though we kind of get shortchanged on that one, we what we get as payoff for the rest of the episode is actually really impressive. And yeah. for anybody who wasn't spoiled for it, pretty surprising too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Sorry, Katie. I'm literally the only unspoiled person on this panel anymore. I was Me. probably about two episodes into this series yeah. when I got spoiled for this one. I, and this is why you never go looking for videos on YouTube because people entitle it spoilers this and this and this like yeah. that's not what I was looking for at all <laughs> I think that um I think it was interesting too because like when you if when you get into the episode you don't know what's going to happen like you're, you're thinking from the last episode like it's done already and then like and then they're sitting there and you think well how long is this going to go on for why is this titled the end of the world because they're sitting there and they're freaking out mm-hmm. they lost 14 people yeah 14 people died as a result of this boss fight and they're mm-hmm. like crap dude and we, we still have 25, have 25 <laughs> floors left to go 25 floors left and they've given us a boss with a one hit kill move yeah right. what on how earth could possibly more? be waiting for us on those other floors exactly yeah. and it's just kind of like one of those things where I was sitting at home watching and I'm like I don't know if I, what, what, what we're can you go from this point? Because I don't think I want to stick around and wait another 25 levels to see how many people die. <laughs> <laughs> and kind of and neither do they. They're pretty much fed up with it. They, I mean, you could see it, the looks on their faces. They're all completely distraught because right. they're like, if this is, if we're not even at the end game yet, and this is how bad it is, you know, 14 of our best people were killed in this fight. Yeah. Except for Heathcliff, who's stand, everyone else is sitting or collapsed on the floor in some way, like, okay, we are so done. And Heathcliff's just standing there, completely and he's, unruffled. <laughs> right. with and his house not in the green. My hero pose. The jerk. <laughs> Hair flowing in the wind. Yes. Yeah. I see the resemblance. I think they do the character based after you. Thank you. Yes. A yes. L- lot of uh, lot of mirror work. Long, and, yeah. long, all the long hair and everything. All those like mocap that. dots. Oh, the the long hair was about twenty years ago. <laughs> <laughs> interesting. I I find him exceedingly interesting because he does have this facade of being this, you know, very upright, you know, commanding presence. Mm -hmm. And and kind of the truth behind that is that, you know, he's secretly a very lonely, obviously troubled guy. Mm -hmm. It It is very interesting to see that dichotomy of, like, the person he wants to be versus the person who he actually is. Very Darth Vader like. Yes. Uh, that that uh, uh, opposite, uh, you know, being good on the outside and then just saying, "Okay, I'm here to kick your butt." Yeah, exactly. Right. Sorry. Yeah, I I found it so interesting though in that one moment though when you know all and he's just staring at him and it's like Kirito's almost like you son of a like just yeah <laughs> because right. he's not phased but the then, wheels are turning you know and, and we get the flashback to the battle of exactly. that shield move. I wonder if 
Right. And, and he attacks him. And it is very, well, we've seen before that Kirito is a super sleuth. He solved mysteries before. <laughs> <and he's, laughs> yes. I would really like it better if the series was just a one murder mystery after another. How many Pretty sandwiches awesome. have to die to this game? How many sandwiches? <laughs> Ah, but anyway, so Kirito, he, he does put two and two together and rushes at Kayaba, or rushes at Heathcliff, and we do get that immortal object icon that comes up, which is yeah. exactly what came up when Yui uh, was attacked by the boss as well. Mm -hmm. So Heathcliff's a wall. So yes. basically, that's also what comes up every time someone hits a wall. It's an immortal object. Like, right. it's a wall. Basically, okay. it's part of the game, and we see now why that is. And Kirito is sitting here psychoanalyzing Heathcliff, going, like, it's the most simple explanation in the world. Every kid knows that it's not nearly as much fun to watch other people play an RPG as it is to actually be in the thick of it and yes. play yourself. Mm -hmm. So we have Kayaba Akihiko has fixed it so that he cannot die in the game, but mm -hmm that he can still be in there and have his hands, basically, uh, in every aspect of the game. He's become the guild leader um, for what he has, he says himself, is basically just him cultivating the strongest players in the game mm -hmm. right. because he has set himself up to be the final boss. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And on the one hand, that's kind of brilliant, but on the other hand, it's like very egotistical and creepy and terrible. <laughs> And I mean, he basically set it up so the only way that everybody can, anyone can get out of this game is if he dies and yeah. the world dies with him. Yeah. Right. So he never, like, looking at it that way, he never intended to leave this world. He's like, I, I'm going to live in this well, to the end of my days. Well, I don't think he's dead. I think, yeah, that, and also because you don't know if he souped up his headgear to not <laughs> That's have. That's true. He might have just yeah. not have like a microwave. That, that little, <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> little kill switch. He's like, yeah, let's not. Let's just adjust that to not kill. Yeah. Well, but then if he wants to cultivate all the strongest players, it explains why he wanted Kirito to join the Knights and of the Blood. And why he wouldn't so right. badly. want Asuna just to leave. Dibs. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So again, all this stuff comes to a head. We get everything makes sense now as to why it happened the way it did. Mm -hmm. So yeah. <sighs> Sorry, I'm just going to be looking at you going. <laughs> <laughs> why are you on <laughs> yeah. uh, But I just laugh because hearing his voice, I just pictured Heathcliff like, why, when he gets hit and it says immortal, like, why are you on a. You ruined it. You ruined the fine. surprise. Gosh. <laughs> well, and he also drops the fact that dual wielding is a unique skill that only goes to the fastest player in the game. Right. Yes. So Kirito is the fastest player, mm. at which point I say, Shonen protagonist. Yes. <laughs> but basically. you know, so yeah, so much. basically, he gets into this thing where he makes this large announcement, basically saying like, "Hey, you know, like, all right, well, you spoiled it. I was gonna be the final boss, and you know, explains everything to them, and then they just like get into it, and he just wait, no, but first he paralyzes. He everybody. paralyzes yeah. everybody because one guy, you know, very understandably goes in to attack him, even though we just saw from Kirito <laughs> that it wouldn't have done any good anyway. Yeah. But he goes ahead and paralyzes everyone except for Kirito. Asuna included. Yeah. And and they have that whole moment. And he has this big old monologue that he's prepared. Mm -hmm. I guess he's like, well, you've all fought admirably, mm -hmm. but I'm going to, since the jig is up, I'm going to go up to the top floor and wait for you there. I'm sure you'll all get there. You're all very strong. <laughs> but, but Kirito, <laughs> I think you deserve a reward for figuring it out. Yeah. So if you can beat me one-on-one -on -one in a fight to the death, I'll let everyone go. Yeah. yeah. And I'll disable my immortality. Right. Yeah. And yep. that would have been a real short fight if he hadn't. Yeah. <laughs> really yeah. Short. Kind of not fair. Uh, yeah. I just like that he was like, all right, now that I'm figured out, I'm going to leave. Have a good day. <laughs> As if, like, it's just <laughs> that easy. Bye, <laughs> yeah. Well, for him, it's still a game. Well, right. Yeah. But, like, at, the, at that point, it's also kind of punishing himself in that it's like, he is there explicitly to play, and now he's like, I'm going to sit in a chair forever, and it's going to be boring again. Um, 
if anything, he should make himself a level one player and uh, go, <laughs> go back, back to the to beginning. The beginning. <laughs> Just like, well, I'm going to be at floor 100, see you in another two years. Well, I'm yeah. actually and... kind of surprised that he didn't go back into hiding because we've seen that he can make his appearance different from what he actually looks like in the real world. So yeah. he very well could have just kind of up and left and then changed his appearance and pretended to be someone else for the that, remainder of the game. But it would be right. restarting pretty hard, though. Yeah, yeah, it would be restarting everything where he built. He wanted to be the lead of this guild to get the strong exactly. players, and you know it wouldn't have been the same thing. And it, all the viewers would have just been like, really? Harry Toe, you've <laughs> right. spoiled all my fun. I think I, <laughs> I think I can say something about Kayaba Akihiko. Can you? Go right ahead. Because I don't think they're going to get into it in the anime because it's just such a side thing from the light novel. Sure thing. And right? it's, it's that he's... He basically converted his mind into data. Oh. I was right. So, <laughs> <laughs> it was You've like, already read the novels. Um, it, it was such a small thing. That's why I wouldn't imagine people remember. Um, and I won't mention the circumstances of when they were told about it because it is a different character that you haven't seen yet. But he basically went on a 2% chance of either microwaving his brain or converting his brain com into complete data. So and he's flying around the internet somewhere. <laughs> basically, he's, Skynet. He's part of the. Skynet, he's yeah. part of the world seed. Basically. Okay, that that makes sense. Um, That's because... really messed up. <laughs> <laughs> but well, then, what I was would that Johnny Depp movie where he put his brain Transcend into Johnny Johnny Depp. Transcendent? Yeah, yeah, we had to transcend. <laughs> That was not Clearly, a good movie. We, well, I've seen that in other shows before, and personally, oh, yeah. it's like, oh, that's probably not the best of ideas, but he clearly wasn't happy in the real world, so right. I, I do not approve of his <laughs> actions in any way, shape, or form. Don't try this at home, kids. <laughs> no. But then, you know, Kirito and Asuna have this whole moment where she's like, don't do it, and he's like, I have to. Okay. <laughs> okay, go get it. I believe, I believe in you. This is how she sounds to me all the time. <laughs> well, again, they're kids. And then we they're have kids. these moments of, Ah, Gil, we know that you worked really yeah. hard to get the medium players oh, up. Yeah. It was good for you. And Klein, I'm sorry I didn't go that with you. I think about that. <laughs> you were totally right. And I was right. And again, and again, trying to like have a date with him afterwards. Like, damn it, Kirito, if we get out of this, you owe me dinner. And he's like, I'm going to accept your apology now. I'll accept your apology when we're in the real world and you're buying me dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Are the other woman? <laughs> so Klein. Yeah. So that I happened. Adore Klein. He is my favorite. So good. So then that happened, and then you know, and I love the little moment he says beforehand when he's about to get into the fight with him, and he just says, "You have to do one more favor for me." And I already knew it was going to be yeah. when I was watching it. And he's like, Ugh. "You can't have. You have to make it so uh, it's impossible for Asuna Asuna to kill herself. Please and take away her free will." Yeah. And, yeah. Well, no, yeah. Jeez. But, but then you know, she's all like, "No, that's not fair." I'm like, shut up, you stupid <laughs> No, I was angry at him for that one because that's... T that it I'm angry at both of them because yeah. they're both still children. And yes. again, I don't approve in any way, shape, or form, but at the same time, it was very Romeo and Juliet. And, okay. you know, as, as adults, we roll our eyes at that because yes. that's nonsense. Well, no, right. they are like, in a life and death situation, that's true. though. No, no, no. So but, there is that way. But, but here's the thing you were saying you said you got mad because it took away your free Well, no, it didn't. It, it's just a matter of like, what would be the point to have had this relationship and everything happen that where even if he died, she would just off herself? It's like, nah. Biatch, no. Like, like, I'm, trying just, I'm trying to think of. I, I was trying to think of the, the, the age groups that are listening to us. We're like, trying not to get that. an explicit rating yet. I think. But keep it PG-13 if but, you can. Oh, they say that word in PG-13 <laughs> movies. But yes, you know, they do. but just, but just the whole fact. It's like, no. Like, if you're gonna have gone this far with him, and if your relationship were to have meant anything, and to still gain something from it, to kill herself and not just keep trying her best to beat the guy. No, and beat I would the game think afterwards. that she, if if he, if Kirito had lost, that it would be. Her her solemn duty to get revenge. That's what I'm saying. Right. But like, but she's a stupid teenager. No <laughs> offense to teenagers out there. But, you know, but like, she, she might it's have only take that away. To the stupid ones. Right. It's it's frustrating as as a viewer and as somebody who really likes Asuna. It's very frustrating. Yeah. Because yeah. You're like, come on, girl, get it together. Yeah. Well, anyway, go ahead. Oh no, go ahead. Advocating. Uh, uh oh. Uh, <laughs> I mean. You could argue that uh, a few episodes she said that Kirito was technically the only reason that she was alive because she was probably going to kill herself at some point before she had met him. And you then... sound like you're delivering this with a lot of conviction. Totally. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm, 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 I'm giving the argument, not that I am in favor of it, I'm just saying that maybe some people think this, and I'm representing everyone. She right. did <laughs> say that if 
he went and died and she didn't go and wasn't able to do anything about it, that would be the I would like to die now phase. Right. At this point, she's there, but she still can't do anything about it. Paralysis. Yeah. That's well, true. So they have this fight. Anyway, so, so then, yeah, now yeah. we so. now we get into the fight, and it's a pretty spectacularly animated sequence. Yeah. Um, just Definitely. the two of them fighting. Just pretty. It's it's what we got in the duel a little bit, uh, you know, a few episodes ago. But the stakes are are much much higher now, and it is a legit fight to the death. Mm-hmm. And uh, not only that, but everyone's freedom is at stake as well. And so it, they fight, and it becomes very clear after a little bit that Kirito, he's realizing he's not going to win. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's hes fighting a losing battle, and it gets to the point where Dark Repulsor shatters in half. Yes. Yeah. There goes and, the dragon sword. Which I'm also going to point out real quick that after the scene that we're going to announce that just happened after that, when he picks up the sword again, I could have sworn that it was still intact. So that no, that was no, he picked up sword. Oh, okay, sword. okay, okay. Yeah. It has a different guard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that makes sense. But yeah. anyway, yeah. So <laughs> exactly. Then, you know... So he uh, Heathcliff is essentially he's getting ready to to strike Kirito for the killing blow, and Asuna somehow off screen has disabled her paralysis uh, just in time to jump in front of Kirito, and it's a fatal hit, and her health goes into the into the red, and then and empties, empties, and she shatters, but not uh, without being like sorry. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. And poor I slipped. Just I was trying, trying to run to away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. This is one of the most emotional scenes. Yeah. <laughs> that we get. We got the trombone. <laughs> womp womp. But it is. It's. It's one of the saddest things that we've seen in this series because He's Kirito trying is... to catch the sparkles like a small child with bubbles. Right. Yeah. And then that last one yeah. that just hits the foot and, it... <laughs> and just and shatters. Love, and, I, and it was funny because I know it was a slightly different to, uh, key, but I just heard like Mario collecting a coin. <laughs> 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 Now that we've added every inappropriate sound effect that we can. <laughs> and then and at that point, it's just kind of like he's not and even trying. He's, yeah, no, he, he he's... pulls out a lucidator and he tries to continue the fight, but he, you can tell his heart's not in it anymore. He's yeah. just like, nah, bro. And yeah, that's when Heathcliff, he's like, well, that was a bummer, but well, now you have to die now. And yep, basically, just, runs wow, through. I'm right sure there. I never put anything in that allowed players to disable their own paralysis. I guess these things just happen. <laughs> Literally. I guess these <laughs> things just happen. These things do happen. Which he, I, it's, the, it's the classic villain mentality, you know, they just assume it's gonna work out the exact way I want it to, no matter what. What? Yeah. Right. Are you telling me I didn't account for this in my Xanatos mm-hmm. Gambit? <laughs> huh. Well, hmm. these things happen. It doesn't matter. These She's things dead. do happen. But oh, I think, well. I think he got added to the stack of 3,000 some odd. And I think he 4, got 000. really disappointed, too, at the end, too, because not only was it just like, well, that happened, but then afterwards, like, Kirito is Kirito just Kirito has lost no his will to spirit. fight. Yeah. yeah. And then he's just like, all right, enough of this. And yeah. Just, but like, yeah. Everyone, I guess true love shouldn't have affected you that badly. <laughs> But these things happen. I think he's more upset, well, that now Kirito doesn't want to play anymore. Well, yeah, so. basically. Yes, because he doesn't understand the death of your wife. Anyone who sets up a murder game like this doesn't have any concept <laughs> of how people dying might affect other people. And then... And then, but then there's that whole scene where, you know, he sees the, like, you are dead, which is great. Yeah, like, in real life, you are dead. dead. <laughs> like, Could you just, imagine if goodbye. that was the last thing you saw was you a little dead. red? Well, for 3,000 people, death. it was. Yeah, oh. 4,000. Well, they said <laughs> wow. that 6,000 and some change survived. Mm, it's well, roughly 4,000. Right. Right. Anyway. <laughs> you also hear this sound. Uh, <laughs> maybe need the Mario sound, though. Wee, 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 oh, boom. <laughs> <laughs> but it turns out that he, that's not what happened. Is a couple seconds before he actually dies, he's like, no, no. not yet. And he takes Austin a sword and stabs Heathcliff, which we have a very brief moment where Heathcliff smiles right before Kirito connects. And so it's it's one of those things where I, I think he knew going into it that this is exactly what was going to happen. Of course and that I that did. Was, yeah. <laughs> We're talking about all part of the plan. All yes. part of the greater plan. Yes. yes. And then, the 
the greater good. The greater good. And then it just like it, but it's so weird too because then all of a sudden it's like I was like, you can't do that. It's the one thing with the paralysis and now this. Like what? Like what's going on? Like what? What? What Blame is so Huey. special? I, Blame I, Huey. <laughs> I think you did it. <laughs> but you know, and then he, and then they all kind of just everything starts. What's the next thing? He just kind of like wakes up and he's well, like, what he's happens, standing in, in the sunset. Yeah, sunset. what happens is Kirito shatters and the you know the shards kind of go out and over all the, the people world. somehow and are we like see, looking shiny. And we see everybody that they've connected with, <laughs> um, who's still alive throughout the series. <laughs> um, Sachi, <laughs> you know, Yulier and Thinker and Sasha <laughs> and. Uh, Yuriko and uh, Kynes and basically all those people that we've met over the course of all these episodes. Yeah. Um, we've seen them and then... I'm impressed you remembered all their names. <laughs> yeah, I know. I really Don't remember yeah. Elizabeth. Impressive. They all touched her heart. I remember Elizabeth. <laughs> the easiest name though, that's like the most English, Lizbeth, and you're naming off all the other ones, but you didn't mention Lizbeth. It was funny. <laughs> it was the hard that ones lady. I was trying to commit yeah. to. <laughs> but... Um, so Kirito wakes up in this kind of ethereal plane, which is the the sunset scene the that we sky. get in the opening, and um, Asuna's there, and they're they're basically you know they're like where are we? I don't know, and they they basically determine that okay, well this is where we'll disappear, and and you know because um, you see the world Kirito, falling apart. Yeah, you yeah. see the world falling apart, and Kirito brings up the menu, and it says initially aiding final phase, and it so, has a fifty five second countdown timer going, and so basically. They've determined that this is this is the end, basically, and that they'll be at the end together. When all of a sudden, Kayaba Akihiko also appears in this area. Surprise! <laughs> Bet you thought you'd seen the last of me. <laughs> Which it's interesting. Kayaba Akihiko and Heathcliff. They're two different actors, correct? Two different actors. Yes, I only played Heathcliff in the show. Well, uh, it was funny. I actually auditioned for both. Uh, oh. When I, I when I received the audition notice, they said we want you to read for Heathcliff, and then the real world avatar, I mean, no, Heathcliff the avatar and then the real world character. And so I read for both and then... Did you use different voices for both? Uh, I, I tried to differentiate, it's more, not so much different voice, but more of a different attitude. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I tried to make Heathcliff, well, now I see what we're doing, you know, kind of more authoritative. <laughs> and, and, and because the scene they sent me was when he was first sitting in, you know, talking about the, the, the brotherhood, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And then um, I think the dialogue that they sent me for, um, how do you pronounce his name? Kayaba Akihiko. That's it, that guy. Kayaba, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, it, Is there a scene at the end, I guess, well, oh, I shouldn't give it away, should I? Uh, <laughs> where it, he's talking to a massive crowd. He's wearing a big robe. And, oh, and that's it, way at the beginning. Oh, the beginning. That's You're right, stuck beginning. in the game. <laughs> I'm stuck in the game, yeah. So I, and I read that scene, and I sent them both in, and... Um, uh, I got a call. I said, yes, you're going to be on the show. I said, great. So I go in. They say, you're playing Heathcliff. And I, it's like, oh, so I'm playing Heathcliff, and I'll just wait for them to call me for the other guy. I said, yeah. no, it's somebody else. All right. Well, <laughs> we'll do that then. They probably did that because they wanted to add, like, an element of surprise. They they wanted it to, my, my guess, that's my guess, um, right. behind oh, sure. the casting that choices, is yeah. so that that people wouldn't suspect. They're like, hey, that guy sounds familiar. Right. <laughs> the top audiences yeah, definitely are a, good, very a very good, good. possibility on wonder, that one. I wonder, did they do that? Were there two different Japanese voice actors for the characters? I couldn't tell that you. That would be a good thing to look up. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I have no idea. Google. Booth guy? <laughs> Google. Google it. Booth guy, do you know? <clears throat> I don't think so. No, I don't no. think so. Nobody Who knows. It will forever be a mystery. Live in mystery. I played Heathcliff. That's all that matters. Of course. <laughs> exactly. And so Kayaba Akihiko basically gives this explanation of how he always had this dream of a castle in the sky, and that now that the game has been cleared, uh, the servers um, are deleting all the information, and so the world is falling apart, and that everybody who has survived will go on to, to re-enter the real world. But, but what about the dead people? They're dead. They're dead. <laughs> yeah, oh. sorry. That's that's how. That I just works. found it very interesting too how like calm and level headed they were talking to him in that scene. I would have just been cussing him out. <laughs> but yes. like you know, well, there, again, when you only have fifty five seconds, right? I think uh, being uh, dead uh, changes your perspective <laughs> on things. Uh. And and he he they go on to ask him why? Why did he do all this? And he's like, I don't even remember why. I just always had this dream and. On the one hand, again, it's kind of, it's kind of a little, it's frustrating as a viewer because you're like, I want to know why. But on the other hand, that kind of adds another air of mystery and ambiguity to it. He doesn't see, he's not completely this, you know, mustache twirling villain like we'll get in the next episode, guys. <laughs> all this tells me is that he is a sad little man. Yeah, that's right. all. 
He just he did this whole big thing, doesn't even remember why, loses himself along the way, and pretty much goes in expecting to die. This is someone who has problems. <laughs> Like yeah. a lot. Yeah. Right. When I first watched it, I like my first question was like, "What are you running from?" Um, and like, uh, that's a good question. Well, yeah, because uh, I kind of equate him to Kirito when we first see him in the show, where he's like this lonery type guy who is essentially running away from the world that he knew, like his abusive grandfather and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and so he comes into this game, and you see him grow because of his relationships, but I don't think Akihiko had the same opportunities. And so like, you could reason that, I mean, if given the opportunity, Kirito could have become this at some point. Um, but yeah, so that was my thoughts on the whole thing. That That's makes fair. a lot of sense. That's he very... was forced to eat Brussels sprouts as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> They're the worst. No one understands. <laughs> no one understands Brussels my sprouts pain. and there, green beans, the... I'll tell you. They're the worst. I don't like, think I... Crazy thing. Yeah. <laughs> I like Brussels sprouts. <laughs> there, but for You're the sounds of God, go on. Balsamic <laughs> glaze? <laughs> anyway. But no, but I just... I think you guys, I give so much credit to you guys for, for well, something must have been wrong with them. And I'm like, I have less faith in humanity where I just think this horrible person existed and it, there's a such thing as a sociopath. So We're not saying he's not a horrible no, person. No, I know that was funny, but for the death of 4,000 people. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yes. So, but, you uh, know, if you have a villain like that, like you, like you said, I mean, a sociopath, you know, just thought processes just go and go and go and there's, there's no pause for thought to say well now what could this cause it's no i'm inspired i'm going to do it mm -hmm. and for whatever reason it just goes and goes and goes and these things just mm. happen <laughs> these things, these these happen. things just happen, yeah. things happen. <laughs> i but think that's a line we're not going to let go of no probably <laughs> not just ever. these things happen these things just happen but so yeah. he he turns to them and he says congratulations for clearing the game i should probably get going and he turns around and disappears He's like, Peace out. and Toodles. And we have Asuna and Kirito sitting down together, you know, moments before the end, and that's when they tell each other their real names. And oh, yes. Kirito is actually Kazuto Kitigaya. I think that's how you pronounce Kitigaya. it. Kitigaya. 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 And then Asuna, her real name is Asuna Yuki. Something she's going remember. <laughs> yeah, a lot easier. <laughs> I have to keep her reminding I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say it now. I'm just going to keep calling him calling him Kirito yeah. because I, I've grown accustomed to calling him Kirito. Right. I think it's interesting. It's, it's like Nabashin. Well, yeah, it's, it's a like combination Nabashin. of yeah, two it, names. It is. Yeah. It's, 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 ka, ka, it's the Kitty from the first name and then yeah, yeah. the toe from his last name. Okay. Yeah. but exactly. uh, yeah. It's, like, it's like Nabashin. <laughs> I thought that whole scene, though, the animation, though, where it when everything went black and white and it was like a sketch and it was like the Take On Me video. Like, that was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I swear yeah. I thought that was like, put it away. And then there's like, put it away. Never going to be able to look at that scene again. She's going to be taken. And it makes up like a little bit of Family Guy in it, and like Chris just falls out of like a milk box. And says, Where were you? I don't know. <laughs> so uh, exactly. I just think of the so, literal version. So they fade away, and that's when we get Kirito waking up in the hospital. He's alive and, and malnourished, and completely <laughs> malnourished. And he he's able to take off his nerve gear, and we see his hair because he hasn't cut it in two years. And he's those long flowing locks. That he's <laughs> I mean, he's got his aren't in his so face, jealous. but everything We've else. We've gone through. full Bishonen. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And he he manages to pick himself up because he realizes if he's alive, that it stands to reason Asuna is probably alive too. I thought BS on and that so whole scene of him being able to walk though. <laughs> okay, you have not this, walked for two this years. This is what kills me about this scene: is that for one, yeah, he's been inert for two years. You need massive physical therapy for, before you can do anything. <laughs> for another, he gets up, he rips off his sensors, he takes out his IV, and just walks down the hall. And I'm like, no, 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 you rip off your sensors, that's flatlining. That's a code blue. <laughs> you can that even hear the sound in of there her. in 15 right. seconds or less with the defibrillator going, we gotta save this the guy. Entire... Hopefully it didn't microwave his brain. I don't think he but went he his goes IV right. out into the hall and just walks into the fluorescent sunset to the happy tune of the closing theme. I like how there are no people. Like there are no nurses. There are no guests. She He's woken up in Silent Hill. <laughs> like as far as no, no, I'm that's concerned. the opening of Walking Dead right there. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's exactly how I just, Walking Dead opened up. I want the second arc to be Kirito's in another game now. He's in Silent Hill. That's what I want. I that would be better than what, what we happened. saw in this next yeah. episode. I like that. Uh, At least there'd be a reason for the creepy. The one thing I just thought is like the first thing I want to do is just wash my hair. 
Yeah. <laughs> your hair. Your hair has been under that thing for two years. <laughs> it is a nappy mess. <laughs> go find a sh I hope he was trying to find a shower because, you know, shoot, if I was going to go find my long lost love, I probably would want to like, smell good. I need like to freshen that. up a little bit, you know. I mean, yeah, because they've probably been like giving you sponge baths, but no one's been able to touch that freaking headgear thing. So uh, Everybody's got that. dreads. It's all matted. Yeah, yeah, it's all matted. Off, yeah. Everybody looks like they just walked out of a Bob Marley music video. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. But anyway, that's the end of this episode, and that's the end of the Einkrad arc, and we we open up with a new arc first. But before before we get into that, um, I would like to talk to Kevin, obviously, about uh -oh. your role. Hi, Hi Kevin. Hello. Hello. And so, so as... Did um did they tell you from the get go that you were going to be the villain of the series, or did they just give you the audition and they're like, this is a, this is the type of character? It no, is. they definitely gave me an overview of uh, you know an explanation of the relationship to the real world character and that he is the villain, but we got to come across as like you know this guide, this mentor to everyone, you know, and to, to put all the, the all the pieces in place for the chess game, you know, and then you're going to kick his butt at the end. <laughs> and, um, yeah. So, it was, you know, that, and like, that's, cool. I, exactly, you know, I was, because we were talking earlier that, um, you know, most of my time uh, early on in doing anime was more of the younger kind of, you know, kids and, and happy-go-lucky, and, and suddenly I'm playing this villain, and they always say villains are the most fun to play. Yes. You know, cause Do you think that's true? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, you know, because you, you always end up rooting for the villain at some point. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, because if there were no villains, then the hero would be just sitting there on the couch saying, well, i got nothing to do today. You know. yeah. Heroes would have been able <laughs> um, to log out. We're, exactly. We'd have no series. <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah. So, um, so uh, you know, and I, I you know, uh, I had to look back, actually, and only spend about a couple days on it, you know, because we only record just our stuff and and he only appears sporadically in some moments but uh uh he was a lot of fun to do uh, you know again it was a, a a new type of character for me to play i think the last villain i played was in trinity blood i was a, just a vampire that ripped out of somebody's <laughs> spine and used it to cut off their neck at the you know oh, something that's, wow a lot nice. of sense memory work for that <laughs> and, and, that doesn't seem um, physically possible <laughs> <laughs> but um Art? Uh, you know, uh, the fight sequences I loved doing, they, they were often referred to as the making the noisements of, uh, the, the noises of amazement and wonderment, you know, <laughs> and uh, the huh, uh, ooh, you know. Yeah. Um, I always envy whoever does the voice of Link. <laughs> you know, just a, ah, 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 you know, like, oh, it's, it's got to it, be so fun. It is. I, I did, uh, I was, I, I worked on uh, um, World of Warcraft a couple years ago, nice. and I had to play a character, and uh, I forget, some kind of ogre, and they said, okay, now, these are dying sounds, which you always wait till the <laughs> end, because you're going to shred your throat doing them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, okay, the first one you're doing is you're getting shot by a flaming arrow through the chest. How, do you say, how does that make you feel? <laughs> how do you, how do you feel about that? that? Well, you know what? You just, you great imagination, and you just take a lot of direction very carefully, <laughs> you know, so you, so you do that, and they say, okay, that's great. Now you're getting your head sliced off by a sword, so it's got to be different. <laughs> It's like, okay, sure, you know. And Remember, it's cutting into your vocal cords. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, sure. oh, absolutely. And I, I, I worked on a, a, a live action dub um, last year, or the beginning of this year, and my character uh, is coming out of the ocean and talking, spitting water out of his mouth. So I had to get a cup of water and, you know, get and try to not hit the monitor where I'm watching the script. <laughs> and what do you think you're going to do? <laughs> you know. <laughs> so there's a lot of work that goes into it, you know. It, uh, but uh, it's it's so much fun. It's so much fun. And, and you know, I, I think... I think he was the first villain I played, and then I play one in Nura. I play mm -hmm. a, um, a kind of a dark, ma you know, ghostly kind of thing in that, and cause a lot of trouble, a lot of problems there. Um, and I would love to do some more. <laughs> <laughs> you know. You said you played a lot of like younger characters, happy-go-lucky. Yeah. What mm -hmm. were some of those characters in your earlier parts of your career? Well, my, the 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 first one I, I did, the first reoccurring character I got was a guy named Harley Hartwell on a show called Case Closed, oh. which I love. And <laughs> he well, is brought not back how every girl <laughs> girl loved. Uh, is, am I wrong in saying that every girl loved Case Closed? I didn't no, watch this you also, are but not I watched several episodes. <laughs> I remember mystery. that. I remember How could I not watch it? No, I said you were not incorrect. It's okay. a double negative. You yeah. are so right. <laughs> <laughs> and then, anyway, sorry. Go oh, so, you know, so, yeah, and then uh, uh, we talked. Uh, uh, my, my favorite to play was Master Sergeant Kane Fury from Yay. Full Metal Alchemist. Yes. I love him a lot. No we're all big um, Full Metal Alchemist fans on this panel. Oh, Any, fabulous. Yeah. For everybody on this panel already knows, but for everybody who doesn't know, I actually have the... Um, 
Nicholas Flamel sigil <laughs> on my tattooed on my flesh on my leg from the series. So if anybody ever wants to question my love of Full Metal Alchemist, I will take you on. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So. Um, but let's see some other shows I worked on. Um, I had one. There was a, a a little known show called Rumbling Hearts that I played the lead on. That was kind of the first foray into a high school drama. It's a very depressing series, but uh, yeah, I think very I've proud heard of that of one. That. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I, I love that one and. Um, I was in, uh, um, now I can't remember. <laughs> yeah. uh, Do you have a preference for what type of genre you like to be in, or is it more con uh, dependent on what type of character you're playing? Um, as an actor, I just want to work. <laughs> but um, no, and in doing this, I, 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 you know, a lot of the stuff I did was was kind of set in. I, I wouldn't mind doing a more sci-fi thing or a horror thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I really wanted to be on Trinity Blood really, really badly. Nice. And I can remember that was the only time I ever did an audition, driving away thinking, I can do better, let me go back. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but um, I, you know, I, 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 I wouldn't mind doing some more horror, some sci-fi. I, uh, I did some script prep work for Funimation and um, did some sci-fi scripts that uh, I just was like, oh, I'd love to be on the show, you know, and mech fighters and, and all that kind of <laughs> stuff, you know. but. Um, but then, you know, I wouldn't mind doing some of the kids again. Those are always fun because they're crazy and silly and, yeah. and, and adorable, as they <laughs> That's say. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and we'll we'll come back. Sure. We, we have more questions, but we do have one more episode to cover. Absolutely. And oh wait oh let's just I, do let's just do the episode next week with the next one oh, and let's okay. do the finish out with the interview because we only have like seven minutes left so I don't want to. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, just kidding, everybody. I was looking at the clock for the timer, so I thought we had another 20 minutes. My As apologies. opposed to the time on the clock, which says we have fewer than that. Oh, <laughs> wow. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk oh, about no. episode no, no, no. 15 next week. We prefer week. you. We, we got okay. more time. We'd we rather we, talk to you than talk didn't... about this upcoming episode. Yeah. Yeah. They're <laughs> letting fair. all the fans know. I already, I already tweeted out, but I was like, I have a lot to say about one of the episodes uh -oh. today. And <laughs> I just, I don't think either any of us were particularly big fans about the episode that I guess we'll recap. Fair enough. Heathcliff. Oh, I, uh, we really we, we got through that episode and went. Oh, so that's our new villain. Can we have Heathcliff back? Yeah. Please, please, please. Where's Kayaba Akihiko? Excuse because me. because with with Heathcliff there's uh, and with Kayaba Akihiko with them both there's this kind of duality obviously with the facade Absolutely. and and this new villain doesn't have any. He's completely we've, transparent. We've gone from like oh, this wow. weird sociopath that has a lot of issues that wants to like control and things. a lot of moral ambiguity and a lot of mystery in terms of. What is what is he hoping to accomplish, and, and why did he do this? And then we have, and then we have this guy that seems just incredibly rapey. Oh. We take a hard left turn into <laughs> yeah. a Yuwatase anime, and it's not yeah. good. And anyway, straight up, I have to get caught up on this. Yeah. 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 Save or yourself. Don't. Or don't. <laughs> Save yeah. yourself. Uh, but anyway, so so you like playing villains, and you also, I do, yeah. but you like playing the kids too. Do you? And I'm, I know every, every time we ask this question, every actor that we ask is always like, "It's like picking children." But do you have a favorite? Do you have? Um, does anything stand out in your mind as being like, "That was awesome. I want to do that more." I have two because one's anime and one's live action. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I've I've got to give all my love to Kane Fury. I mean, yes. he was so much fun to play. He was yeah. such. Um, and I was telling him, real quick, I, I'd already moved out here to L.A. when Brotherhood started, so I figured they would just recast him. But the director, Mike McFarlane, was so cool, he recorded the lines in the timing to match the flaps and the inflection he wanted. And Bang Zoom was so generous to let me just use a studio. And I was able to record all of Fury's stuff and still be in the show. So, yeah. nice. so oh, that was wonderful. great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I was very, very excited about that. I would have been upset if it wasn't the right, the, the, the same. I, I really did love the cast they needed. And I think I mentioned it on another panel. It might have been this panel. But I mentioned the one thing that I loved about Brotherhood the most is that was one of the first um, dubbed anime that I really came to enjoy it just as much as the subtitled. Oh, nice. Because Thank you. I feel that, and especially Funimation in the earlier days, you know, and I then. I understand. And you know, yeah, uh, I was one of the elitists. Like <laughs> subtitles better, but they, but I feel that they really tried to take a comparison and take the characters and and listen to the Japanese actors and really try to portray and take that character with that voice and do the best that they could. I mean, the script was. I, it's amazing to me yeah. how they can take 
um, the, the you know ch to try to match the flaps, and you're, they're basically saying the exact same thing they're saying in Japanese, and that is so hard and amazing. Oh. And I love a good couple of months just to get that <laughs> procedure down. Yeah. Um, but I'll say the other other one real quick. I know we're running out of time. Um, it's a, a Korean film that I did last year called Masquerade, mm -hmm. which is a beautiful period piece. It stars I cannot remember his name for the life of me, but he played Storm Shadow in the two GI Joe movies. Nice. Oh. It's a beautiful dramatic. It was his first dramatic role. He actually plays two characters, and I voiced both characters. And I was directed by the amazing Wendy Lee. And one of the toughest acting jobs I've ever done because I hadn't worked on a project that big in a few years. And I'm just very, very proud of it. There's, some, there's a moment, there's a, a death that happens. The emotion you hear was all real because I wow. was just bawling <laughs> in, 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 the, in the studio. So those two, I'm, I'm very... Um, uh, yeah, Masquerade, and then of course Full Metal. Uh, full awesome. metal. Yeah. Do you yes. have any um, projects that you're currently working on that you want to kind of have us... Uh, give a shout out for um, well I long well I'm, nothing uh, currently anime wise I'm mm -hmm. always ready for auditions of course yes. hello anybody <laughs> um, but no I started recording I do uh, I'm doing I'm working on two audio books now they'll be on Amazon.com hey, so. and uh, I also do a lot of children's books for uh, a company called Book Buddy where hmm. kids can they're listening to me but they're watching a computer screen and it helps with comprehension that kind of thing so oh, I'm very cool. proud of that but uh, I got two mainstream books I'll I'll tweet and put on my website you yes. know. Um, um, yeah, so that's about it right now. Yeah, so. all right. Well, I love audiobooks. Anytime. Any oh, good. Yes. Oh, oh, I'm doing one. It, I'm doing one. It's a first time author, and it's about a Marine captain who rescues a dog in Afghanistan, then comes back to America, hooks up with these college kids to destroy this whole dog fighting corruption thing in, hmm. in Florida and in Texas. And it's, uh, it's, there's a scene there where when you hear the emotion, because his, 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 his dog he grew up with passed away before he left for the Marines, and he goes to Aww. tell at the grave, he goes to tell Rusty, his dog, that I've got a new dog, but you love him, you know, and Aww. I'm just, oh, every time. It's like more me. Uh, it's, it's so tough. So, um, uh, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys, guys know when it's available yes. and, and when it's out and everything. And, um, you know, I'm... Um, I will say Bang Zoom just asked my availability for the next three months, so we'll see. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Uh, I'd, I'd love to get back into anime again and do it more. Do it. So, yeah. Call nice. me. All right. I will. I'll, I'll be in touch. This is awesome. I'd yes. love to stay in touch with you guys. So, yeah. Um, right. I'll say real. I don't know if, if anybody wants to say hi. Um, my website is 315studio.net, and I promise to answer at some point, not right away, but I will answer. <laughs> and do you have a Twitter handle? I do. It's Kevin M. Connolly. Awesome. Easy as that. Yay. Yeah. Right. yeah. Thank you guys so much for joining us on the Sword Art Online panel. Oh. And thank you, Kevin, Yay. so, so much. It thank you so much. I had a great time. You. you guys are fantastic. Clap, clap, I'd love clap. to come back sometime. Yay. Thank great. you. Cool. Thank you. And thank you for playing such a great villain. I Like yes. we said, we yeah. miss Heathcliff. We miss yeah. Heathcliff so much. We really do. All right. Tari Miller, where can the people find you? You can find me on Twitter at Tari J. That's T-A-U-R-I-J-A-Y. Uh, you can also catch me on the Legend of Korra panel, the Extant panel, and the Dominion panel. Ooh. Liz. Hey everyone, you can find me at Lizzie Maui on Twitter and Instagram. That's L I Z Z Y M A W Y. You can also find me next on the Cora panel with Tari here, and you can also find me on the BBC's The Musketeers and on Dominion. Katie. Hey, you can find me on Twitter and Tumblr at Kiaje. That's K I A X E T. I'm also on the Attack on Titan, Legend of Korra, and Ruby panels on Sunday, Sunday, and every other Thursday, respectively. Wow. <laughs> Sunday, Sunday, Thursday. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> every other Thursday. Listen, Thursdays. listen, be there. <laughs> and I'm Megan. You can find me on Twitter at The Menguin. That's T H E M E N G U I N. <laughs> I am also on the Attack on Titan panel and every other Thursday, the Ruby panel as well. Thank you guys so much for tuning in this week. We will see you guys next time. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later! The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.